How do you get ChatGPT to make flashcards that don't suck? This is a question I've had boatloads of people ask me over the past couple months. Four people have asked me this question. They're small boats. I've had canoe loads of people ask me this question over the past couple months. And today I'm going to show you what I do to be able to make flashcards that don't suck. When you work with ChatGPT, it's important to understand one key concept. GPT is not giving you the answer. GPT is giving you what it thinks a correct answer looks like, mm -hmm. right? It's not the thing itself. It's not the answer. It's an inference. Because ChatGPT is making an inference, it's relying on the patterns it observed in its training data to generate its responses. But it doesn't rely solely on its training data. It also takes into account instructions and the context from your prompts and from short conversations that you have with it. This is what makes it versatile, but also malleable. This is why it's able to write you an email in the voice of William Shakespeare. Not because it has some file stored away titled Shakespeare emails that it's referencing. It combines the patterns learned from its training data with your input to be able to infer what the correct answer might look like. And thus the actual quality of the response is largely up to us to decide. If we feel that the chatbot's responses are falling short, it probably means that it doesn't have a clear picture of what exactly we're trying to get it to do yet. And in the context of creating Anki flashcards, it means we need to do a better job teaching it what a high quality flashcard looks like so that it can apply that pattern to all of the future text that we give it going forward. The real trick is being able to figure out how to do this within the limitations of the tool. Limitations like short-term memory, limited attention span, prompt token limits, and other issues. OpenAI used to have a feature where you could share a link to a chat window with other people, and they could pick up the conversation right where you left off. This meant that I could spend an hour talking with the chatbot, giving it a lot of feedback, and getting it to that sweet spot where it really understood what I wanted it to do, and where it was putting out very high quality Anki flashcards. I could then save a link to that point in the conversation, and then whenever the chatbot inevitably started screwing up again, I could just click that link and go back to that point in the conversation where it was well-oriented and making high quality flashcards. It was amazing and it saved me a bunch of time, but that function was killed a couple months ago. You can still share conversations, but uh, you can't continue the conversation yourself. But fortunately, it was replaced by something that is even more useful, custom GPTs. Custom GPTs are the secret to unlocking super high quality and consistent responses from the chatbot. With custom GPTs, you're allowed up to 8,000 characters, which is roughly 2,500 words, to be able to get the chatbot perfectly oriented to whatever task you're trying to get it to perform. You can bake in all of the important parts of your prompts, and it should be incorporated into the baseline knowledge of the chatbot, so it never forgets its task, and you don't have to clutter up your conversation with a bunch of background information. You can even upload your own PDFs or text files that weren't part of its original training data or that it didn't have access to during its training for the chatbot to use as a reference during your conversation. I think it allows up to 20 files. I tested it out the other day and I think that was the maximum I was able to add. This makes it so that the starting point of your conversation is always at a point where it knows exactly what it's doing and it has a clear picture of what you consider a high quality output. This frees up a lot of space in your prompts for you to be able to give even higher level feedback so that the outputs and the quality of your flashcards can be even higher. This feature alone makes the ChatGPT Plus subscription totally worth the money in my opinion. It just makes ChatGPT so much more useful, even beyond making flashcards. I have a custom GPT that creates my weekly meal plans and writes my grocery list. I have another custom GPT that I use to create JavaScript elements that I use in my flashcards. And whenever I'm working on a really big project, I create a custom GPT so that the chatbot always remembers the progress we've made and kind of the goals of what we're trying to accomplish. And the best part is custom GPTs are super simple to set up. And if you wanted to create your own custom GPT, all you'd have to do is open up ChatGPT in a normal conversation window like this. And then on the sidebar, come down here to explore GPTs. This is where we can search and browse for public custom GPTs that other people have built, but we're interested in making our own. So we're gonna go ahead and click in the right upper hand corner on this green create button. You'll be taken to an interface that looks a lot like this. And then up here you have two tabs. You have a create tab and a configure tab. We would use the create tab if we wanted to let ChatGPT build the custom GPT for us, which is an option if you don't know exactly what you want. But if you know exactly what you want to do, then you can click on the configure tab and you'll have a little bit more control over exactly what the GPT does. So I'm going to go back to this configure tab. Here we have several fields. The first is the name of our custom GPT. I'm just going to name this one Anki Basic GPT. 
the description field is where we're gonna just describe to other people what the custom GPT does. It really doesn't matter for us. I mean, it makes flashcards. And you'll see it update over here on the side, the name of the custom GPT as well as the description. All right, now the important field. This is the instructions field. This is where all the magic happens. This is where we're gonna put the most important parts of our prompt as well as all of the high quality examples that show the chatbot exactly what we want it to do. And I'm going to source a lot of this information from the prompts that I have on my website. So we're gonna navigate over there. And then I have a special prompts tab here that you can find all of the flashcard prompts that I use. And you can basically copy this whole prompt as it is. We're gonna remove some of this stuff, but go ahead and click copy in the right upper hand corner. And we'll come back to the instructions field and then just paste it in. Um, I'm going to make this full screen so it's easier to see. We're gonna get rid of this. You don't need that. Now this would be enough to be able to start working with the custom GPT as is. But if you wanted to really increase the quality of the outputs and the flashcards that you get, you can give a lot more high quality examples and that will just improve the quality of the outputs you're getting. And the other beautiful thing about the custom GPT is as you work with the chatbot and you come up with more feedback and figure out what it's doing well and what it's doing poorly, you can add that information to the instructions field and over time, your custom GPT will just get better. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that for now. And this field here is the conversation starters. So uh, let me just show you how this works. So here, a conversation starter is where you would just put a short prompt that people could click on to be able to kick off their conversation with your custom GPT. Down here in the knowledge area, you have the option to upload files. So if you're working from a specific textbook, you can upload the entire textbook and it will have it for a reference as you're creating flashcards. Or if you're working on a specific project trying to code something, um, you can upload examples of the most recent working versions of whatever script you're working on. So down here under capabilities, these are different abilities that we can give the chatbot um, or give our custom GPT, uh, such as web browsing, image creation, and code interpreter. I actually don't think I'll need any of these, so I'm just gonna uncheck them all. Down here under the actions field, there's this create new action option. This is where you can add actions for the custom GPT to be able to perform outside of ChatGPT. But this is really for more advanced developers and outside the scope of what I need to do with making flashcards. So once we have our custom GPT configured, we can test it out in this side window. I don't know, we'll just grab some random text. Give it just a short prompt here. We'll paste our text in and see how it does. All right, so the formatting looks like it's working pretty well. And I'm looking at these cards and they look decent. And then to finish it off, all we have to do is hit the create button up here in the right hand corner. And we have some options of where we wanna share it. I'm going to click anyone with a link so that you can go ahead and use this via the link in the video description. And it's been published. I'll copy that link for later. So that's kind of just a quick and dirty walkthrough of how you might set up your own custom GPT. I'd like to show you um, one of my custom GPTs. So back on the GPTs page, we're gonna click on the My GPTs button. And then I'm gonna click on the Anki GPT. And then up in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to hit Edit GPT. And so here you can see what I've set up with this custom GPT. I've got all the important parts of my prompt, as well as some high quality examples that it can use as a reference. And then I have an area for feedback that I give uh, based off of what I find out that it's doing wrong or issues that I have with the outputs. I'll go ahead and update this feedback area. And as I work with it, it's gonna just keep getting better and better. And the link to this custom GPT will be in the video description in case you wanna just try it out and see if it works for you as well. And down here in the knowledge area, you'll see that I've added a PDF of some flashcards that I've made in the past that I think are really high quality for it to be able to reference. And then I have another CSV file full of flashcards that I've made with ChatGPT, all high quality cards that I thought were really great um, that it can use as examples as well. So down here you can see examples of those conversation starters. All you have to do is hit one of them and we're ready to start making flashcards. Now, is it going to 100% fix the low quality issue when working with ChatGPT? Probably not, sorry for the clickbait. But for right now, Custom GPTs are definitely a reasonable way to improve the quality of your flashcards or whatever outputs you're getting from ChatGPT.